Now I'm gonna go over some resist techniques. Um, the most common is probably wax resist, um, which a lot of potters use on the bottom of their um, pots, maybe before they glaze them, to um, allow that surface to resist the, the glaze if they're like dunking. Um, but it's also really great for surface decoration. So I have an example here of Andy Shaw's um, older work, and he uses wax resist techniques to get these patterns on his pieces. And so you can see like he is waxing everything other than these areas where it's indented. Um, and then that's where he's gonna be wiping away the surface to remove it. So I guess it might be a little hard to see like, but there's actually depth in each of those little triangles. So I have some um, examples that I've already done here. So um, for this one, it's just the, the bare clay and I've, I've laid some dots on here. Um, but another option would be to actually lay some underglaze down first so you have some color and then you could wax that and then you could actually wipe away that color. Um, so I will come back to showing you how those all work after I um, demo how to apply the wax. So I have a piece of clay that's pretty wet, um, but it doesn't need to be. It could be anywhere from wet to leather hard and it'll work. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and apply some wax got my wax um, and there are a lot of different kinds of wax waxes out there um, I found that this wax resist kind of is a standard wax resist from Amico works great um, if you get a wax resist that doesn't have a color if it's white it can be really hard to see once you've painted it on and you can actually just squeeze like a couple drops of any kind of food coloring into the wax and then it will give it this color which makes it easier to see once you put it down on your surface so I'm just going to kind of repeat what I did earlier and just add some circles. It doesn't need to be really thick. We just need to coat that area that's wet that hasn't been bisqueired yet. You can usually just scratch it off the surface. All right, there we go. So now I have my wax on this piece and I'm gonna go ahead and just set this aside um, you know, if you're actually doing this um, in like a class period, I would say it's probably best to do your wax design and actually leave that um, aside to dry for the next class period. Um, unless they're applying wax really thin, it's actually gonna take probably like a half an hour to dry that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on these ones that I worked on um, earlier how this wax resist works. So I've wet my sponge and what I'm gonna do is just rub the, the clay layer off. Um, and where the wax is at, it's actually just going to resist. And so that area is gonna be raised up. So this tile is already pretty dry. It's bone dry actually. So I do need to be careful because at this point it's really fragile. Um, and especially when you're putting moisture back into the clay once it's bone dry, it actually makes it extra fragile. So do be careful. Um, and I'm gonna actually take a layer off in this direction. So I, I've gone the whole way across. No, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch directions. Before you use this process on a large scale, make sure you just test your wax to make sure it works. Um, and is appropriate for the technique that you're using it for. There are lots of different kinds of waxes and different ways to apply it. Some might not hold up to um, such like aggressive kind of rubbing as others. It's subtle and I need to keep working on this, but like if I feel this, I can feel that this is now raised up a decent amount. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working on it, especially like over here so with, with this wax resist technique, like um, before we bisque it, we're never really gonna access that um, area underneath the wax. But once we put this into the bisque kiln um, and it comes back out, the wax will actually be gone. And so it'll just be a raised surface, which is the goal here. Mm -hmm.